So, uh, in Patrick's uh, presentation, I saw we had a, quite a lot of junior Solidity devs in here. So, this talk is for you guys. Uh, sorry for the expert Solidity guys, you will get bored as fuck. Very sorry for that. And the intermediates, well, yeah, maybe I can actually uh, give you a few, a few tricks. So, uh, most of the talk is based on the ERC721, but basically you can use these tricks in if you're making a staking contract or a landing contract or whatever, it, it will always work. So, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the... <laughs> Okay, I crashed it. Sorry, there was code in the slides, and the thing, the thing doesn't work. Okay. So, very first tip. Stop copying the board tape contract. <laughs> the board tape contract actually uses the ERC721 enumerable, and the ERC721 enumerable is actually responsible for 80% of the gas when you mint. So that's actually pretty horrible. Uh, and if I say, yeah, you can't use that, he will probably say, yeah, but my website developer, yeah, but he wants to put a counter on the site, and we want to have a, a wallet of owner. Uh, we want to have, have those things. And then, indeed, we, we saw some thumbs up. Some people would say, hey, we have the ERC721A. And I will say again, let's not use that one. Why not? Well, the ERC721A is actually is a pro-whale contract. And what most people don't know is if you like mint 100 and then a poor guy comes and he buys number 50 back from you, he will actually pay the transfer tax. And he's actually paying that mint. And that tax never goes away. Not even once the contract is completely defragmented. So my advice is implement total supply yourself. Implement Waller, Wallet of Owner yourself. And yeah, we're all developers. So, come on. Okay. I know we're all lazy, so I did that for you. You can just steal it off my GitHub. I call it the ERC721F. What's the F stand for? What's the F stand for? Right, right, right. right. There you go. <laughs> I was going to call it B, but somebody in my Discord said, no, 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 let's not call it B, call it F because it was a little bit of a, a pun on Azuki. Okay, uh, now we're going to do some code. So, state variables. Almost all contracts have state variables. And if you use them more than once, they're actually an S-load, and an S-load will eat 200 units of gas. So it's more interesting to make it a memory load. So if you use it twice, just copy it to a variable first inside your method, and you will actually use less gas. Now, this one gets really interesting if we are starting to look at loops, because you probably need some loops uh, somewhere in your contract. And, um, well, we're going to loop over an array, array.length. It's an S load. So, I'm going to get the hang of this. Uh, copy it to a variable. This will actually uh, reduce your gas with 60, 60 units of gas on each iteration. So if you're minting out 25, you're actually saving 1,500 gas for your client. Now, we can, we can actually go still further with, with the for loops, because this, this for loop is not that good yet. We can make it better. So this was the for, for loop of the last slide. Now, what's in there? There is this counter in there, the index counter, because the for loop needs to uh, hold the number where we are. And well, we, don't, we no longer use safe mods huh, since, I think, uh, compiler 8, something like that. We don't really need it anymore because the Solidity is doing the checks himself. But can this actually overflow? This cannot overflow. So why do I need to check? I can make it unchecked. And this will actually chip off 
another set of, I think like, another 60 uh, points of gas on each iteration. Another example also coming out of a, a 7 to 1 contract, probably you have some, uh, some airdrop method and you want to give addresses in there. And this is usually how you do it. You, you just you put in an array and you put that array on memory. Now, if you're not going to change the data that's in that array, you're only going to read it, you can actually use call data. And call data, once again, reduces your gas by a nice chip. Somewhere in my laptop, I forgot the number. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> okay, let's see what, what else can we do. Comparisons. Comparisons on unsigned uh, integers. You, you probably have some requires uh, somewhere in your code. So use the not equal instead of the larger than on zero. It's very weird, but this actually reduces gas. And we do this all the time. So we can do it like that. Ah, yeah. Okay, this is, this is a, a magical one for Solidity Devil. Uh, in Solidity, we actually we have tulips. And this is how you would swap two variables. Any developer here that programmed in another thing than uh, Solidity, I'm a Java developer myself, he usually do does it like this. However, in Solidity, you can do it like this. It's less code. For me, it's less readable, because I'm probably too deep into the Java thing. I'm not used to this. But once again, it's not that much. It's about 26 units of gas, but it's less gas. How are the non-developers holding up? Anybody fall asleep yet? OK. This is, this is one I see a lot. I do quite a lot of uh, audits on contracts. And if your method doesn't need to be public, make it external. That means that any internal or private method can't call it anymore. So no other method of your contract can actually call that method anymore. It can only call, be called from outside. But what happens in a public method, that is when you put in all the data in the variables, the method will actually make a copy of all those values. And it will not do that if it's external, because then it knows it's already contract data. So you're basically chipping out a lot of assembly code here, and once again, using less gas. So do it like this if you don't need it. And yeah, most mint methods, for some reason, are public. You can all make them external. The optimizer. The optimizer is also a good one. So everybody knows from the developers there is an optimizer in your compiler. And you have to turn it on. And to my experiments, the sweet spot is around 1,000 for a 7 to 1 contract. So standard in, in Remix, it's on 200, uh, I think most things. So you have, you have to boost it a little bit. But what is interesting to see is that the efficiency of the optimizer, it's actually a curve that does that. So your first optimizations, they chip off a lot of gas. But if you go further and further down the road, you're getting less and less. However, your contract is getting bigger, so you're going to pay more for the deployment of the contract. So for me, the sweet spot is around 1,000. OK, I'm close to out of time. Uh, I'm good. OK, thank you. Uh, one last one, uh, when you and this, this is for the deployer. So if, if we declare variables in a contract, they actually they go into storage blocks. However, the compiler decides himself when to make a new storage block. If you do it like this, the mapping in the middle will actually force that a new storage block gets created. And the more storage blocks you use, the more gas you will pay as a deployer. So 
if you actually do it like this, you will pay less cost. This is not for your clients. This is for you as a deployer. You will actually pay less costs. And that was it. That wrap is good to check again. Thank you. Now, well, one more thing. Uh -huh. who, who still wants to use the Azuki? Did, did, I, oh. did I change something? Uh, you got to get the, <laughs> you got to get the after vote. Yeah. Okay, vote for me, guys. No, I didn't vote. I had, some did change, not that much. I noticed a lot more votes. <laughs> more voting. Yeah, yeah, more voting. But thank you very much, and please keep cars as slow as possible. Thank you.